the Doppler effect is the perceived change in frequency as a result of relative motion between the source and observer, where we remember that frequency is the number of complete waves that pass a point per second. So here we have a source, note here that a source can be anything that is emitting a sound or any kind of wave. In this case, we have a source that is emitting a frequency of 1000 Hertz, which says that there are 1000 waves that are passing away from the source per second. So we know that if we place an observer within that range, we know that that observer, while remaining stationary, is going to experience 1000 waves per second, and as a result experience exactly the frequency that the source is emitting. Now what the Doppler effect tells us is it tells us that as soon as there is relative motion between the source and the observer, the frequency that this observer hears or detects is going to change. And there are two ways in which it can change. The first is when there is relative motion in which the source and observer are moving towards each other, whether it's the source moving towards the observer or observer moving towards the source does not matter. And what happens when they are moving towards each other is as we can see, instead of allowing those waves to reach the observer at the same rate as they left the source, by moving towards the source, the number of waves per second increases. So we say that the observed frequency is higher than the emitted frequency. This is because as a result of that motion and as a result of the, them moving towards each other, those waves appear to condense, meaning get closer together or compact, get closer together, which means that the observer detects more waves per second and therefore a higher frequency. By the same standard, if there is relative motion in which the source or observer move away from each other, as we can see here, as the observer moves away, the perceived distance between the waves is going to increase. As a result of that perceived distance increase, it means that they are going to detect fewer waves per second, so we say that the frequency decreases. Now, since the speed of sound in air is always a constant, always around 330 meters per second, in order for the frequency to increase, the wavelength must decrease. And when they are moving away from each other, in order for the frequency to decrease, the wavelength must increase, meaning the waves get longer because those waves appear to spread out between the source and the observer, again, as a result of the relative motion. It's very important to note here that this is only a perceived change. This does not mean that the sound of the siren or the sound of the car's engine or the person speaking is changing. We know that an ambulance always emits exactly the same sound and all that is changing is the way that we are hearing it. So we say it's a perceived change. The actual frequency does not change. It is only the frequency that we perceive. So once again, we say that the Doppler effect is a perceived change in frequency as a result of relative motion between the source and the observer because when these two, the source and the observer, move towards each other, the wavelength decreases and the frequency increases because those waves appear to compress and get closer together, thereby increasing the frequency and decreasing the wavelength. And as they move away from each other, the wavelengths appear to be further apart, meaning the wavelength increases and correspondingly the perceived frequency decreases. The Doppler effect has many real-world applications and it's important to have an understanding of what these are and how the Doppler effect applies. So the first one is in a blood flow meter in the medical world where the Doppler effect can be used to determine the speed and strength at which blood is flowing. The second is similar in that it can be used to measure the heartbeat of a fetus. Other applications we know radar speed trapping where essentially waves are bounced off an oncoming or moving away vehicle and the frequency at which those waves can be or the waves returned to the device can be used to determine the speed at which that vehicle is traveling.
The third one is, or the more common one, is astronomy, where we will often talk about red shifts and blue shifts. Now, we know that the colors, or the colors of the rainbow as we know them, or the color spectrum, is arranged uh, violet, indigo, blue, green, yellow, orange, red, and we say that's in order of increasing wavelength, or it can also be in order of decreasing frequency, basically saying that violet light has the shortest wavelength and red light has the greatest wavelength. So when we say that light has been red shifted, what we are saying is that red shifted light has been shifted towards the red end of the spectrum, meaning that the wavelength has increased. As the wavelength increases, the light tends towards the red side of the spectrum and the light appears to be more red. Now, what that tells us is that increasing wavelength tells us that the frequency has decreased as that wavelength increases. And we know that that happens when two objects are moving apart. So when we look at a distant star and we see that that light appears to be red shifted, we can then say that those two objects must be moving apart, which is why the Doppler effect is used as part of a proof for an expanding universe because all the light that we see from stars appears to be red shifted, which implies that the wavelength has gotten longer, which implies that the distance between those two objects has increased in the time it took the light to reach us. The opposite of a red shift would then be a blue shift, which is then obviously just what happens when two objects move closer together. As they move closer together, the wavelength decreases, therefore the frequency increases, and along with that, we say that the light becomes more blue, and then you can say that sources and observers where there is a blue shift present, you can then say that those objects are moving towards each other. So we use the red shift to know that two objects are moving away from each other or apart from each other, and a blue shift to know that objects are moving toward each other. What this also shows us is that the Doppler effect does not only apply to sound waves, but applies to all types of waves, and that includes the electromagnetic spectrum. The Doppler effect equation allows us to calculate the observed frequency when we know what the speed of sound in air is, as well as the speed of the source or the observer, as well as the emitted frequency. And as you can see, this equation is different in that it gives us options because there's a plus and a minus, both in the numerator and the denominator of this equation. This refers to whether or not, whether it is the source or the listener that is moving. So there are two examples that we're going to do to illustrate this. The first one is an example of an ambulance that is traveling towards a stationary observer at 30 meters per second while emitting a frequency of 10,000 hertz. So immediately we can see that the observer or the listener is going to be stationary. So we can say our observed frequency is going to be equal to the speed of sound in air, which is usually given around 330 meters per second. And obviously the observer's velocity or the listener's velocity in this case is zero, so we can leave that out. And we are now left with 330 and then plus or minus the velocity of the source, which we have been told is 30 meters per second. Now, the only complicated part here is to determine whether or not this is a plus or minus. I prefer to use the logical method here, where we say that since this ambulance is moving towards the observer, we expect those waves to bunch up, and therefore they should observe a higher frequency. And in order for this to come out as a higher frequency, it would have to be written as a negative, which then allows us to calculate the observed frequency at this listener as the ambulance approaches as 11,000 hertz, 1,000 hertz higher than the emitted frequency. A second example is one where we have a stationary source that is an ice cream truck that is emitting sound waves and they are traveling towards a person who is running away from this ice cream truck, so it is not a stationary observer anymore, at 10 meters per second. So what this allows us to calculate is the sound heard by that 
listener, the person that is running away. And here, once more, the speed of sound in air is remaining a constant. The speed of this person as they move away is 10 meters per second. Once again, plus or minus. And as we said in the question, it is a stationary ice cream truck and therefore velocity of 330 plus the zero velocity for that source. And then the, emit, the emitted frequency of 12,000 hertz. So now once again, logic would tell us that as this person moves away from the ice cream truck, the waves would spread out and as a result, the frequency would decrease. And we would illustrate that frequency decreasing with this being a negative 10 here which tells us that the observed frequency is then 11,636.36 hertz. Important to note for the NSC exams, there will only ever be a moving source and a stationary observer or a moving observer and a stationary source. You will never have two objects in motion at the same time. And then if you find it difficult to understand the logical method, another way of looking at this is that if the objects are moving towards each other, that would be a plus in the numerator or a minus in the denominator. So for objects moving towards each other, it is always plus on top and minus on the bottom. And for objects that are moving away from each other, it would always be a minus on the top and a plus on the bottom so you do not need to use the logical method if you can see as in this example we have the objects moving towards each other we can see that it is the source that is moving therefore we would use a minus at the bottom for this object over here we have objects moving away from each other it is now the listener or observer that is moving and therefore we would use a minus at the top A common question in the Doppler effect is one where a sound is reflected off a surface as an object continues to approach it. The question typically goes along these lines that a bat or a dolphin or a submarine is approaching an object at a constant speed, in this case 8.25 meters per second, and emits a frequency. Now bats and dolphins and submarines emit very high frequencies, so note here that this frequency is 39 kilohertz, so that is 39,000 hertz. The wave then reflects off this object and then bounces back towards the original object that emitted that sound and then we are asked to determine the frequency that is observed where once that sound has bounced off the original object and in this case we have a bat and so the speed of sound in air is 330 meters per second often for a question with a dolphin or a submarine we would use the speed of sound in water as 1,500 meters per second. Now the trick comes in this question in that we need to realize that the Doppler effect applies twice. It applies once as the bat approaches this object because as it approaches it is moving towards the object and therefore the sound waves bunch up and the Doppler effect is applied once so we say that the frequency observed at this object is going to be higher than the frequency that the bat has emitted. What then happens is we see this object, because it's reflecting the sound, we see it as emitting that same sound. That is reflection. Reflection is returning the same wave as what arrived. And so what we find happening is that this sound is emitted back towards the bat, but now we have a bat moving into those waves which compresses those waves once again. So the reason why this question can be tricky is because the Doppler effect is in effect applied twice. And so we do that the first time with a moving source and a stationary observer where we have our original Doppler effect equation where we can say that the frequency observed is equal to the speed of sound in air 330, the observer or the listener is stationary here so that is zero and in this case we now have a source that is moving towards that object so therefore 330 minus the speed of that source 8.25 multiplied by the original frequency kilohertz we remember means multiplied by 1000. What that tells us is that 
the sound that is observed at this object, the rock or the cave or whatever the sound is reflecting off, is then 40,000 hertz. And that is only step one of this calculation because now we need to remember that that 40,000 hertz frequency is now essentially emitted from this object towards the bat as it approaches once again. And so the Doppler effect will apply once more because the bat is flying into those waves, except now we have a, a moving source. So we now have a stationary source and a moving observer. So we use our Doppler effect equation once more that says frequency observed is equal to the frequency, the speed of sound in air, but now we have the listener, the observer, approaching that sound, so it is definitely going to be plus that object's velocity divided by the speed of sound in air. Once again, our source is stationary, and now we need to remember that the sound that is reflected is the sound that arrived there or the sound that that rock essentially heard. So it is now 40,000 hertz, so the Doppler effect being applied on the value that we obtained in the previous calculation, which tells us that the frequency that this bat would now hear or receive is now 41,000 hertz. So all of these questions that involve reflection, it is important to remember that the Doppler effect applies twice, once when the source is moving and the observer is stationary, then that stationary observer acts as the source to reflect that same sound that it received and we then have a stationary source and a moving observer. The Doppler effect can often be tested with a simultaneous equation where the question would read something like this, where we are told that a train is approaching a stationary observer at a set speed V and the observer observes a frequency of 500 hertz. The train then continues and passes that observer, and then as it's moving away at that same speed v, the observer then observes a frequency of 440 hertz. Now this question is unique because the velocity of the train has remained unchanged, and we have two observed frequencies, but we do not have the source frequency. So we have two unknowns, but because there are two separate instances here, we can see this as two equations with two unknowns. So we apply the Doppler effect twice. The first time for the train approaching where we say when the train is approaching the observer observes a frequency of 500 hertz as given. We are told that the observer is stationary and therefore there is no speed there and we are always given the speed of sound in air. In this case that is 340 meters per second. And now we know that since the train is moving towards the observer, those waves are going to be compressing or condensing. And so that this should be a minus sign here. And that is minus the speed of the source, which is also an unknown along with the frequency of that source. We can then rewrite this in terms of the frequency of the source. And that then comes out as 500 times 340 minus Vs over 340, and that's as far as we can go. We have two unknowns there. We can then do the same thing for the second instance, that being the train moving away from this observer. We now know that the observed frequency is 440 hertz. Once again, the observer is stationary. Speed of sound in air remains the same. And now, because the train is moving away, we know that that means that those waves are going to spread out to expand as they move away and therefore we have a plus the speed of that source and then again the frequency of the source being unknown. This can then also be rewritten as frequency of the source is equal to 440 multiplied by 340 plus the velocity of that source over 340 and we now have two equations and two unknowns. And what we can now safely say is we can say, but this train's frequency has not changed. Therefore, since the frequency of both of these sources is the same, we can then say that these two must be equal to each other. That is 500 times 340 minus Vs over 
340 must be equal to this calculation over here, 440 times 340 plus Vs over 340. This can then be solved because we now have one equation with only one unknown because Vs is a constant and that then allows us through algebra to determine that the answer, the speed of this train is 21.70 meters per second. Once we have this answer, we can then substitute it into either one of these two equations to find the correct frequency for that source. And we find that the correct frequency for that source is 440 multiplied by 340 plus this calculated frequency, calculated speed of 21.7. And that is divided by 340, and we find that that value is then 468.08 hertz. The emitted frequency in this, we can check for ourselves, makes sense because it is exactly, or it is not exactly, it is between the frequency that is heard when the train is approaching and the frequency heard when the train is moving away. Another common question would be something along the lines of, what frequency is heard by the train driver or heard by the observer as the train passes? And in both of those scenarios, the answer is the same. The frequency that is heard is exactly the frequency that is emitted because at that point, there is no relative motion between the source and the observer.